thing, which was the one rule accumulation function. Here's the overall structure of it. So here's the overall structure of it. There are other there are details in there that are important, but this is the way that this is kind of your overall thought about it. Okay? And this thing is primarily about two key principles, and it's the two key principles that we've been hammering for a month now. What's the first one? What's the first key principle that allowed us to build this accumulation function? We can calculate a little bit of accumulation by how? What's symbolically? What is a little bit of accumulation? Symbolically. DY. Okay, one person knows. Good. But everyone knows now. And don't forget. DY means a little bit of change in our quantity, a little bit of accumulation. And how do we calculate DY? With constant rate of change, right? With constant rate of change. So this is the, the change in the dependent variable, a little bit of accumulation, is our constant rate of change times change in the independent variable. So where does that show up? How does that help us form the A function? Okay? It's, it's the whole thing. It's just a bunch of these added together, right? The whole thing is just mdx added together a bunch of times. What, for the completed intervals? We do that once for every completed interval. See? Rate times change in x, right? Rate times change in x. And then we do that one more time, a smaller one, right, in the current interval. So, so this function is essentially just adding up a bunch of accumulated changes. Each one is calculated by m times the change in x. Okay? So for all the completed intervals and for the current interval. All right, and then what was our other key principle that plays in here? Oh, there it is. Final value is the initial value plus the change, right? Final value is the initial value plus the change. So y final is the y initial plus dy. So how does that show up? Well, if we think about all the completed intervals, all the accumulations from the completed intervals, like we're in the current interval, then all the, all the accumulation from the completed intervals is like our y initial for the, for the current interval, right? So if, if we're looking at the current interval, then our total accumulated amount so far was all the accumulation from the completed intervals. So it's like our y initial plus the change in y, which is our little bit more for the current. A little bit more for the current, all right? So these two really important principles are just, they make up this A function. Okay. And then so we know there are more details to fill in there for the A function, but I'm just, we're talking big picture right now. We're talking big picture. And the details are important. The details are important, but memorizing all those details is meaningless if we don't have, don't have the big picture in place. Anybody have a question about that? Really important little mini discussion here. Okay. So let's work on this. Uh, we talked about the sand unloading activity. So let's just talk through some of these questions. We're not going to, uh, we'll go put you to work a little bit. Is there an extra one of those white sheets? Okay, so I think the first thing was, so uh, again, we're looking at this cot, thank you, this is uh, an exact rate of change function, it's the rate of change of weight of sand in pounds per, or hundred of pounds per second, as time goes by, right, as time goes by, okay, and so uh, we want to talk about, uh, and then on this set of axes, we're going to build the accumulation function, that's our goal, so we have the exact rate of change, Start with exact rate of change. We want to build, in the end, we want exact accumulation. In the end, we want exact accumulation. So we're working on all the, the steps and parts to this process of doing that. So what are the independent and dependent variables for the rate function? What's our independent variable for the rate function? Time since we started unloading, right, in seconds. That's the, that's the <laughs> x-axis, dependent variable, or independent variable. And what's the dependent variable for our given graph there? Rate of change, hundreds of pounds per second, okay? What about accumulation? What will our independent variable be for accumulation? 
Same thing, same independent variable as we had for the rates, right? Same independent variable as we had for the rates. Time in seconds. But now the dependent variable for accumulation will be? Pounds, or hundreds of pounds, right? Pounds. That's what we want to know. We know how fast the quantity is changing at every moment. We want to know how much we have at every moment. That's accumulation. The sand is going to accumulate on the scale, so the, or the weight of the sand is going to accumulate on the scale, and we want a model of that based on the rate at which it's accumulating on the scale. Okay? So, uh, you guys, so it, label your axes there. Okay, so now you're going to highlight points on the rate of change curve every 0.3 seconds, starting from zero, ending at 1.8. And then just maybe pick a couple of points, just any, any two or three points that you highlighted. And, and it says, uh, represent those, those rates exactly, okay, using function notation. And maybe uh, highlight on the y-axis the values of those uh, expressions <coughs> that, you, that you wrote. So you're going to um, yep, highlight the points for every 0.3 seconds, and then for two or three of those, Express the rate of change exactly, and then show where that would be on the y-axis, right? Show the value on the y-axis. Okay, so I have done that. You can check your work. I've put the points there. And so say I want to look at this, uh, this highest approximate rate right here. What is, how would we express that, the rate of change associated with that correspondence point, right? That correspondence point is a time in seconds and a rate paired together. How would we express the rate of change associated with that correspondence point right there? How would we, how would we, yes ma'am? But how would I express it symbolically, that exact rate of change? Oh, but we know what that input is, right? We know what that value is. So we, we don't have to use all. Okay, R of 1, this highest one. That would be our 0.9, right? 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9. Is it R of 0.9? R sub W of 0.9. And so then to see that value, where would we look? Where would we indicate that value? The Y axis, right? So that R sub W of 0.9. So you could do that for one or two. If you do it for all of them, it'll get too messy. Okay, so just maybe one or two. But R sub W of 0.9 is that exact rate associated with that particular correspondence point, and its value would be on the y-axis. Okay, so now you're gonna you're gonna build the approximate rate function using those those rates that you highlighted, and use the rate just like we've done at the left side of each interval to make the constant rate for the intervals. Now we're gonna now we're building the R function, right? The approximate rate of change function using these, the rates associated with these points and the left side of each interval to be the constant rate, to determine the constant rate for that interval. So sketch your the function r, sketch the function r.
then go go ahead and do uh, that was number three. So you're working on number three. Go ahead and do four and five on your own. You can get some help from some people around you. We'll walk around, but just go through number five. Just work up through number five. Take about three or four minutes. Work up through number five. Get help. If you need help, get help. Here's number three. Here's number three. I put up number three on the board. <clears throat> ask if you have a question. Make sure you ask.
put number four up. I put number four up. I saw lots of you had. Okay, let's regroup. Here we go, let's, let's regroup. So we have, uh, so the, on the left, what's being uh, generated there is the approximate rate function, right? And then based on those approximate rates, we have the approximate accumulation function. At first, we did that piece by piece. And so we got this A function that was piecewise, right? One linear function. The next, one linear function for the first interval. Then another linear function for the second. And then another linear function for the third. And then we said, we want to write that in one rule. And we have that now. We have the one rule that generates that same function that we had to do before in lots and lots of different pieces. Okay. So what is this? This is giving us a pretty good idea of what, how the weight of sand is, how the weight of sand is, uh, what the weight of sand is at time since we started unloading it, right? And that's how much we have, right? So we, we uh, know how fast something is changing. We want to know how much we have. Well, that's what the A function is, the accumulation of pounds of sand, how much we have at any given time. That's what that function shows us. So now number five. I yelled at you a couple of lectures ago, and I'm going to yell at you again. This is on the test, number five. This is on the test. This is on the test. Where does it all begin? What kind of function is first? Yes, exact rate of change. Exact rate of change. The red curve. It's the exact rate of change of sand unloading onto the scale. And what do we do with the exact rate of change function? Jacob. We make the approximate rate of change function, which is our step. It's like steps, right? Constant rates. That's the one I am showing in blue right now, showing it emerging. That's second. We make an approximate rate of change function. We do that because with constant rate of change, we can get dy. We can get little amounts of accumulation, how much we have, right? With a, with a continually changing rate, we have no way of getting amounts. We have no way of calculating amounts of change, accumulation. But with constant rates of change, we know dy equals mdx, and that's what that whole A formula is based on. We can get little bits of accumulation dy based on these constant rates, m, or r sub w of 0.9, r sub w of 1.2. So that was, so what's next? So, so from the approximate rate function, we build the approximate accumulation function. That's what you sketched over on the right. How, now instead of rate of change of sand, it's Pounds of sand, accumulation of pounds of sand at any given time. So, and then the, and the fourth, which we haven't done, we'll do this today. So from approximate rate of change, then we reach our goal. And what was our goal? Exact. Did I say rate of change? Sorry. From approximate accumulation, the third phase of the journey, from approximate accumulation, we want to get the exact accumulation function. This is our journey. 
It's on the test. Everyone get it right. I want to see 100% success on these questions. It's just the, an order of four things, which is so important. It, it doesn't make any sense to learn all these details. We don't have this big picture in mind. Okay? Exact rate of change. Approximate rate of change. Approximate accumulation. Exact accumulation. So we're going to take a second here, down there at the bottom of the page, to see how A works. So we're going to do A of at 1.4 seconds. So I'm going to freeze it here. Where's 1.4? So we're going to pause time at 1.4 seconds. There it is. And we want to see how this one rule accumulation function, how does it generate the amount of sand at 1.4 seconds, okay? So the first question is, how many complete, if we're at 1.4, how many completed intervals do we have? How many completed intervals, everyone count? People are saying four. Is that right? Yep, four. I can't find it. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to do this down at the bottom. Got our graph at the top. Okay. Here we go. Almost there. So, uh, you said how many complete intervals? Four. Okay, what's the value of left x? Four. What's the value of left x? Four. Okay. What, is, what goes into left x? What kind of thing goes into left x? And what kind of thing does it give us? What kind of thing goes in? An x, the current x value, wherever the current x value is, and then what kind of thing comes out of left x? Another x value. This is a different kind of function than you're used to. It spits out a, another x value. Which x value? The x value at the left side of the current interval, right? So it's going back to the, the break point of the current interval. All right, so what is the value of left x if x, x is 1.4? Right, 1.2. I'm not writing pen here. And then what's the last question there across the top? All right, what's the value of dx? What's the value of dx? Right, 0 0.2. So we've got four completed intervals when we're at x equals 1.4. value of left x is the, the x value at the left side, 1.2, and dx is 0 0.2, the change in the current interval, right? The change from left x to the current value of x. So if we have four, so we're going to, we're making a table here down here, so make a, a vertical line like this. And so j1, 2, 3, and 4. Since there's four completed intervals, that j index on the summation it's going to cycle through those four values. J equals 1, then J equals 2, and then J equals 3, and then J equals 4. That's what the summation will do. And it's going to calculate, what, a little bit of accumulation for each of those completed intervals. So when J equals 1, what, this is taking us to the left side. Remember this thing? Taking it to the left side of the first interval, which is what? A is 0 plus 0 times delta x. Zero. That's the left side of that first completed interval. That's what that thing does. And then in the formula, so, so this is all based on
Sorry, I can't get it to scroll. Okay. We're, so what we're doing is we're seeing how this works. Okay, so that's why I put this here. So when j equals 1, it gets this input into r, which is the left side of the first current interval, and it gives us 0. When we put j equals 1 in there, we get 0. And then we're going to find the constant rate for that first interval. That's right there. See that? What's the constant rate for the first interval? So r of 0, right? And then it takes, what, r of 0 times? times the 0 0.3, which represents what? The change in y, or the little bit of accumulation of weight for that first completed interval. <coughs> so it keeps track of that. And then it makes j equal to 2. And when j equals 2, what value of, this is the value of x it's going to put into the rate function. What value of x does it put into the rate function? a is 0 plus 1 delta x, which is? 0.3, so it's going to put that value and get the value of the rate function at 0.3. And then again, it's going to take that times delta x. So this is what we're working on right here. We're working on this part right here for each value of j, right? We're working on this right here for each value of j. So 0 0.3 times 0, 0 0.3. Okay, and then it does that for the third interval. And when it gets done with the third interval, so I'll let you do the first two things later. It gets done with the third interval, it's going to be R of 0 0.6 times what? 0 0.3. So when J, J equals 3, it calculates M delta X. And then for 4, R of? 0 0.9 times partial interval. It's going to take R of what? Left of X. What's we said? It's going to be R of left of X, right? Left of X is 1.2. So it's going to do R of 0.2. But not times a whole delta X now, but times DX times 0.2. Or X minus left X. And then what's the A function going to do? We got the little accumulation for each of the completed intervals. We got the accumulation for the partial interval. What does it do with those? Adds them all up. We got summation, right? Summation of the completed and then a plus, right? Plus the little bit of accumulation from the... So plus, 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 plus. And when you add all that stuff up, you get A of 1.4. Which is what? How much? How many pounds of sand have accumulated in the first 1.4 seconds, according to our approximate accumulation? Questions on that? Anybody have a question? So this is getting into the guts of how it. How our one rule function works, how it works. Okay, anybody have a question? I know you're not packing up. I know you're not. I know, you're, I know you want to, but I know you're not. Okay, here we go. So now the moment we've been waiting for. Just calculus for a little bit longer, please. And then vacation, okay? Yeah. Let's talk after class. Yeah, because I got one more thing to do. All right, here we go. Listen up. Please, please stay tuned in. Please, please. I'm begging you. Stay tuned in. I'm begging you. Okay. So here we go. We've done all this hard work, and because we have so because we have GC, we can do something really hard, really fast, and that is make our approximate accumulation function exact. And many of you already know what that's going to look like. How is it that we can get
closer to an exact accumulation function. Yeah. By making the interval smaller, first of all, look at what happens to the approximate rate function. I'm going to make the interval smaller. Maybe. No, I don't want that. I want this. What happens to the approximate rate function when intervals are smaller? It's, it's, better, it's better at pretending to be the real rate function, right? And so then likewise, our approximate accumulation function will be better, right? Better, closer to this, this mysterious real accumulation function that we're after. And I can keep that process up. I keep making, if I make delta x smaller, I get a better rate function and then a better accumulation function. And then what if we want exact accumulation? So then we make the, the changes really, really small until we, so we can't distinguish anymore. So over there on the left, is that the exact rate function? No, but you can't tell the difference. It's, this is, that's a really important point. It's not, because look, if I zoom in, watch. I just zoomed in on the that function over there on the left, what is it? It's still a bunch of constant rates, okay? It's still a bunch of constant rates. But it's essentially the same as the exact rate function. So the resulting accumulation function is essentially exact also, okay? All right. Got work to do over break. Got work to do.